Hello, Orange Room friends. It's Anne. Today, I'm pretending to be a superhero. Look, I've got a cape. Can you see it? It's got a big, big wings on it. I can pretend like I can fly. Here I come to save the day. I wish I were a superhero. That would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? But I'm pretty just myself. So let's get to business and do our calendar. So today is right here. And it comes right after this number, which is a one and a two, which is, is a 12. So do you know what comes after 12? Think about it and let's count and make sure and see if you're right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, so remember that number and let's see what the pattern picture is going to be. Flower, flower, chick, chick, chick. Flower, flower, chick, chick, chick. Flower, flower. Do you think it's a chick? Let's find out. Yes, it's a chick and it's got a one and a three. So that's 13. And it goes in this column under here, under this day, which starts with a W. Let's see what it could be. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Did I say whoa, 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 Wednesday? So it's wacky Wednesday with a W, a wuss sound. Okay, and it's super wacky because A, I'm wearing a cape and I'm pretending to be a superhero. And two, I forgot to sing the hello song. So let's sing the hello song. Ready? One, two, three. Hello, hello, hello and how are you? I'm fine, I'm fine, and I hope that you are too. Hola, hola, hola y como estas? Muy bien, muy bien, y espero que tú también. Okay, so why am I wearing this superhero cape? Because I was thinking about superheroes and how they help us. And later on, I'm going to be talking a little bit about people that help us as well. But first, we have to check out those butterflies. Now, wait a minute. Could butterflies be superheroes? They are pollinators. That means that they spread the pollen from one plant to another so that the plants can make new seeds and grow new plants. So we need bees and butterflies to pollinate, right? And they can fly, right? So speaking of flying, let's see if our butterflies are flying around. Now, last time we had one butterfly that was still in its chrysalis but they have all come out. So you might be able to see the empty chrysalis shells that are on the lid. And there's also this red stuff. It looks kind of like blood, but it's not actually blood. It's, um, it's called merconium, I believe. And that's something that is natural. It's okay, the, the butterflies are fine. Um, but, so we've got five empty chrysalis shells. So let's see how many butterflies we have. So as you see, they're drinking from the orange because remember, I think I mentioned that we were gonna put orange slices um, so for the 
um, butterflies to drink the sweet juice from. So I see one, two butterflies actually drinking from the orange. And then I see, let's see, you can see this. I have, there's the two on the, there's one right here that's by the lid, kind of close to the lid. Do you see where my finger is? Can you see that one? Now their wings are dry now, so they are able to open them up. So let's show you one that has its wings open. There's two more butterflies up here. Can you see that one? There, let's see. There's one, it seeks moving its wings and it's very colorful. Isn't that beautiful? It's such a pretty, it's such a pretty butterfly. It's orange, mostly orange and black with some little bit of white, maybe a little bit of brown. But look, isn't it pretty? It's flapping its wings. So we had two on the orange, one by the wing, by the, um, the lid, and now we have this one with its wings open. And then there's another one right up near the top. I'm gonna to be very gentle because I don't want to hurt it. But I thought maybe if I gently touched it, it would open its wings a little. Let's see, it's very hard to see because it's kind of hiding up there. So I think our best bet is to look at this one that's got its wings open. See, and it's moving its wings. So I think we should check our directions and say what we should do. Okay, so. The butterflies have come out. That was what we read about last time. And it says to give them slices of fresh fruit like orange or watermelon, or you could put sugar water, give them some sugar water. Now, number six says, let them go. Enjoy and feed your butterflies for a few days. Um, release them outdoors within a week after emergence. So I, ours started to come out on Monday, so we need to let them go by Monday because I think they'll be happier when they can fly around. So I think what I'll do for our next video is take them outside and release them, okay? And then it says your painted lady butterflies are beneficial pollinators. That so they will spread pollen from tree to tree and flower to flower to help new seeds um, be formed. And it says, um, yeah, okay, we are good. We'll do that next time. All right. So anyway, I was pretending to be a superhero and that I could fly and save the day, but people might not really be able to fly and they might not be superheroes, but we do have a lot of heroes in our life. We have the heroes that take care of us, like your parents, or maybe you have a babysitter, maybe your grandparents, they can all be heroes, right? And then we have people that take care of our whole town, all the people in our town, our firefighters, our police officers. And then there's some very special people I wanted to mention that are heroes that are working really hard right now. Those are our doctors and our nurses and other healthcare workers that work in doctor's offices and hospitals. They're helping to take care of people who are sick or injured and they're very wonderful heroes and they work very hard. So if you get a chance to thank any doctors or nurses or healthcare workers, be sure to say thank you. Maybe you can even make a sign or a card or something or for them. So I wanted to read a funny, kind of a funny story. It's um, called, How Do Dinosaurs Get Well Soon? He doesn't look very happy, does he? He doesn't look like he's cooperating. He looks like he's being a little bit stubborn.
What if a dinosaur catches the flu? Does he whimper and whine in between each achu? Sometimes we're kind of grumpy when we don't feel well, but so he might whimper and whine. Does he drop dirty tissues all over the floor? Ooh, that's not a good idea. That would spread germs, right? Does he fling all his medicine out of the door? I hope not. He needs that medicine to get better, right? Does he flip off his covers with tooth and with tail? Oh, he's restless. Sometimes you feel hot when you're not feeling well, when, you have, when you're sick, you have a fever. Does he dump out his juice and get sick in a pail? Oh, poor thing. I hope not. Does a dinosaur wail? Oh, I bet that's a loud wail. He's a big guy, isn't he? What if a dinosaur goes to the dock? Does he drag all his feet? Till his mom is in shock. Oh, that would be hard to drag a dinosaur who's not cooperating and dragging his feet, wouldn't it? Does he hold his mouth closed when he's told open wide? Does he scream? Is he mean? Does he run off and hide? Does he push back each drink, spit his pills in the sink? Does he make a big stink? Is that what you think? No. He drinks lots of juice and he gets lots of rest. He's good at the doctors because doctors know best. He uses a hanky on mouth and on nose. He snuggles right down underneath his bed clothes. He takes all his medicine without a fight. He closes his eyes. He whispers, good night. Then Mama and Papa tiptoe out the door. Get well, little dinosaur. Get well, little dinosaur. Okay, so that was good. He was, he was cooperating with the doctor because the doctor really just wants to take care of the dinosaur, right? even though the dinosaur might feel grumpy because he's not feeling well. So I am going to now pause this video for a second and go outside a minute because I have something to do I wanted to show you outside, okay? So I'll see you in a few minutes. Hi guys, I'm in my backyard. I have my sunglasses because right now I'm in the shade but it's actually very sunny out. And it's a little hard for me to see what you can see because when I go in the sun, it's so bright that the screen looks dark. So I hope this works. But what I'm going to be doing is I'm doing sort of an experiment with shadows. So when it's a sunny day, the sun will cast a shadow. So I am going to move over into the sunshine. I have to put my sunglasses on to protect my eyes. And I'm hoping that you will be able to see what I'm talking about. Okay? So here goes. I'm going to put my sunglasses on and I'm going to move our camera. Here we go. I'm still in the shade so I can see. Whoop! I can not see anything. Man, I can't see a thing. All right, let's see here. Okay, 
So, what I wanted to show you was this paper. Can you see this paper? What it is, is I've put some objects on white paper. So I've got this shell. And the objects you wanna pick have interesting shapes. Like this has a point and it's got these little points that stick out here. You want it to have some noticeable shape. You might have a toy you could use, like a rubber ducky or an action figure or something like that. I also had this motorcycle. So that, I, that had some interesting shapes. It has these handles that stick out. It's got this bumpy wheel. It's got the seat. And it's got the, you know, the back part that sticks out. So what I wanted to do, and I'm not sure if you can see this, is I wanted to fit, um, draw the shadow that when the sun shines on these objects, the object kind of casts a shadow onto the paper. And I wanted to trace the shadow that I see. Oh, I think my newspaper is going to blow away because we also have a bit of a windy day. You can hear the wind a little bit, maybe. I can hear it. Okay, so I'm going to also, I'm going to put something on top of there so it doesn't blow away. There we go. Okay, so I am drawing, sort of tracing around the shadow. Now what I want to do is I want to come back at a different time and see if the shadow looks the same because the sun will be in a different position. Right now, it's 12.25. So the sun is pretty much high up in the sky. Now as the sun moves, as it gets ready to closer to setting, I'm gonna see if the shadow that it casts looks a little different, okay? So let's see what I got. Okay, so this is what I've got so far. I couldn't really see the back of the um, motorcycle, so I'm just going to draw a line. And I've got, I drew on the shadow cast by the shell, and I drew, this was what I drew from the motorcycle, and I couldn't really see the back of it, so I just drew a line on the back. So you're going to get interesting shapes. And then, just for fun, because it's nice out, I thought I would fill in my shapes with watercolors. So I got to put my shell on top of there so it, my paper doesn't blow away. I didn't really need my paper because I'm on an outdoor table that doesn't really get ruined. If, if you have a table you don't want to get paint on, you should um, uh, use some paper or something. Okay, so I think I'm going to go back in the shade so I can see you and see what you can see a little bit better. Because it's so bright, I can't see you in the sunshine. Okay, I am back in the shade. That's better. I love the sunshine, but it's hard to see on this, on this, um, whoop, let me grab this, got my water. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint my shapes, just, just for fun, and then I'm going to measure later on and see how it looks different. So if you, when I'm filming this, it's a sunny day. When you see it, I hope it's sunny too, or you can do it on a different day. And then you can see what happens if you go back and measure your shadow and draw your shadow at a different time. So have fun with this, and I'll check back in with you in a little later on when I 
when the sun has had a chance to move, okay? <laughs>